how to make smooth 3D camera animations in DaVinci. Well, I'm going to show you exactly that. So we are in first. Let's get our fusion composition in. When we get our fusion composition, just make it longer. Somewhere around eight seconds is enough. And let's jump right into fusion. Let's get this media out here and let's get this background in. Okay, now that we have that, what do we need? Actually, we need Merge 3D. Here it is. We need our 3D camera and we need our 3D render node. So let's merge this to here. So Merge goes to render, camera 3D goes to merge, and then render 3D is merged right over here on the main pipeline. Okay, now let's see what do we have in our 3D view. As you can see, here's our camera and that's it for now. So next thing we need is a text plus node. Okay, now that we have our text plus node, let's get our image plane and just connect it to our in image plane. Then our image plane goes to our merge 3D. Let's start with the first word. Okay, let's choose Montserrat and let's go to Black Italic. Somewhere around here should be enough. Let's get our focal length. It can stay on 35 or let's get it down to 28. Okay, now let's get our camera pulled back to somewhere around here. So it's just so we can see. Let's change our background color to something like this. Let's now go to shading in our text plus and then enable red outline. Thickness is going to be around here. Let's set this to black and then let's add a black shadow. Something like this should be all right. Okay, now we need text plus node and image plane for everywhere that we are going to use. So we can just copy this and then paste it however many times we need. I copy and paste one time for every word that I'm going to use. So let's change our words now. Okay, now that I've changed all the text to what I need, let's just connect everything to our Merge 3D. Okay, now that we have connected everything, let's just change the placements of our text in our 3D space. So let's go to the second one. As we can see here, here's a transform for it. So let's just drag it back and to the side, to somewhere around here, and we can change our rotation for a bit to something like this. Let's go. To Next one, so just take it back. Let's put it to the side and again change our Y rotation. Let's go to the next one. Again, just take it back. We can leave it somewhere around here. It should be nice. We can always change the position later if you if we really want to. So let's go to the next one and then let's just take it back like this. We can also move it to the side somewhere around here again, change the Y rotation to something like this. So again, next one, we can just go get around here somewhere. And again, rotation can be changed. You can change it however you want. But keep in mind, if you change the other rotations uh, later in the camera movement keyframing, you will have to keyframe every single bit that you changed. Let's go to the first one. I want to just change a bit of our Y values. So it's not really all in the same line on the Y axis. So let's just go like this.
and the wind chip can stay where it is. Okay, now that we have our words in, let's go to animating our camera. Now, we won't use these built-in camera controls. We will actually click on our camera, press shift and space, and then type in transform. And you need to get this transform 3D. So let's get it in. Okay. Next thing that we want to do, we want to add a grid over everything. So click on your merge here, merge one, and then shift space and type in grid and this first one. So we'll select this one. We will decrease our major lines and then just get our rows down to three. And we can leave our columns, column cells on six. Okay. So let's get our first transform. So let's just keyframe the translations for this one because we don't have any Y trans uh, rotation on it, as you can see. So let's start from frame zero, go to our transform. It's keyframed on frame zero. So let's go to frame 25 and keyframe everything again. So now we are gonna adjust our camera on these translations. So let's adjust our Y. Do somewhere around here. This is why we had to get our grid down so we can center the birds. And let's just add a bit of a Z to somewhere around here. And as you can see now, it looks something like this. It just zooms in slowly. But we want those movements to be faster, so let's go to our spline. Click this here then zoom to fit all, then click this here to select all, press S on your keyboard, press T, it will open up this ease in and ease out, and let's get our ease in to 100, and we can leave ease out as it is. So now it will just make those movements a lot smoother like this. So the next thing we have to do to make those really smooth movements is to add another transform because we don't want to have because we don't want any wait time between the movements that's what makes it smooth the constant moving if we were to keyframe again on the same transform we will have we would have to wait for it to stop and then go again and that's why we are gonna add another transform and we are gonna go five frames before the end of the last moment so it ended on frame 25 so we are gonna go to frame 20 so let's keyframe it here we are gonna keyframe the translation and the y rotation because on our second word as you can see we have changed our y rotation so we have to match that in the camera movement okay so now from frame 20 we are gonna go 25 frames forward to somewhere else, to here frame 45 and we are gonna keyframe everything again okay on the frame 45 we are gonna adjust our view to somewhere around here let's get it in the middle i think somewhere around here should be nice let's get a bit more centered Okay, so here we had a Y rotation of minus 7.8 and we are going to put in exactly the same value in our camera camera's Y rotation. So in our transform, minus 7.8. And now it's just flat. So let's just adjust our X to somewhere around here. Again, go to our spline, select everything, go zoom to fit select all press s on your keyboard and then drag your ease in to be 100 and just leave it at that so again go five frames before the end of our movement so let's go here and then let's add another transform okay so keyframe everything again and here let's see our third board 
again just translation and y rotation that's what we keyframe right here also and then go 25 frames forward and just keyframe everything again okay so our next bird is this right here it's mate let's get in our review it's right here so let's go to the bird image plane uh, y is at 18.3 so let's go back to our transform 18.3 and let's just center it now we can adjust our z a bit more so it just looks a bit bigger so somewhere around here and we can just center it like this so we just repeat the same process on the third transform we open up a spline we go zoom to uh, zoom to fit first and select all and then press s to smooth it out and get our ease in to somewhere around 100 as you already get it i'm gonna just gonna do the exact same thing for every single word that we have in this composition As we progress through this edit uh, later, the camera rotation would actually match the same exact one that you have on your word because it's added at the guard all the rotations one after the other, so it gets a bit wonky. As you can see here on our camera text, on our image plane, the rotation is it's 18.3, but as you can see on our transform, it's actually 42.2 so as you have more and more words you're actually gonna have to manually adjust the rotation okay now that i'm done looks something like this now we can get rid of this grid and just make sure that all of your splines are exactly the same because if they are not if they are not smoothed out exactly it will mess up your viewport so just make sure that they are the same okay now that we have our animation done we can actually spice up this thing quite a bit so let's start doing that now okay next we can actually make it look nicer how do we do that let's add in a background let's add to it the grid let's go here it's what else okay. it can be somewhere around here it doesn't really matter and then we can get our blend down somewhere here next we can add an image plane so we connect to the image plane and then we connect the image plane to multi-merge okay now we have something like this so let's get back you do yours and here is our background but our background needs to be all the way back so somewhere around here let's get it then we can go to scale and scale it up quite a bit to somewhere around here so let's go back a bit more to somewhere around here we can actually change a color you can go for a gradient something like this let's go to some dark dark blue or purple something like this dark purple yeah that works too then we can add this place this here and then add the fast noise on it and then let's get more detail in somewhere around here see trait something like this now it moves with it too but as you can see it just goes out on some places so we have to fix this let's go back to our image plane and then get our scale up to something like 10 and then let's go back to our grid and add more rows and cells so it looks something like this we have something like this now we can actually go back let's 
get this all the way up. We can copy this once more, paste it in like this, and then merge it again. Go to our image plane, go transform, and on our x value, I've been 90. Okay, now that we have this, let's click here. And as you can see now, it just looks like this. It's this one line over the screen, but we can actually fix that by just going like this. And then we can actually drag it a bit back somewhere around here. And as you can see now, now it looks even nicer. We can actually just put it down a bit more so it looks more natural and it's not so close. Somewhere around here should be enough. But now it looks a lot better in my opinion. We can actually do something like this and then type in vignette so we can make it a lot nicer. Let's get precise just somewhere around here. And then just copy this vignette over and just paste it after this displays. And now it looks even nicer. What we can do actually on this here, the first one, we can go up and it will look even nicer. So here we have something like this now. Okay, next we can go in our renderer 3D and then here where it says software renderer. Just switch to hardware renderer and go to accumulation effects here and just copy the settings for depth of field. So just turn it on and copy these settings. We can actually make our quality a little bit higher. This is very draining on the PC, but it makes an amazing effect for the depth of field. Also, if you want to fix up your depth of field, you go actually to our camera. And then go to controls and here you have your focal plane. So you can play with your focal plane however you want. And then you will get different results based on your focal plane. So just play with it and find what works for you. Okay, next what we can add is actually grain. So just type in grain and just add a bit of grain. And we can add a little bit of a vignette on everything. Vignette like this make it a bit somewhere around here should be good and then we can actually type in low and as we can see here apply mode let's go with normal then and then low size amount of low let's get like this down and just in the blend mode just a bit up so yeah that's about it and we are done now